Excellent. Thanks, Sean. So we're going to tackle the big issues first. We're going to talk about the commercial fishery. Um, Sean, we've I've tried to group the questions into topics. So um, people are interested in the amount of catch, um, particularly around sand cat hat, sand flathead, um, and whether or not it includes the bycatch and where the numbers come from and how they're validated. Then there's the method of the catch. Um, and I'll circle back to some of these questions if you haven't covered it in your slides. Then it's where they are caught, looking at both the Tasmanian and Commonwealth fisheries, and then managing the commercial catch. Um, so if you're happy to kick off, um, I might leave some of those questions and see if they have been covered by slides. Yep, no, absolutely. Um, it might be worth just letting people know as well, so the attendees, that if they want to pop any questions into the Q&A um, box as well, I don't think we mentioned that at the start, where you actually put those questions in. So there's a Q&A tab that if there's any questions that we you know we haven't fully explained or you'd like a little bit more info on, just um, let us know. All right, um, so commercial fisheries. Um, so if we start with the Commonwealth fishery at first, so um, we, in, in Australia, we basically have uh, state waters, which are um, pretty much three nautical miles from uh, landfall and they are considered state waters and under the management jurisdiction of the state. Outside that to the EEZ, so 200 nautical miles, exclusive economic zone, is um, Commonwealth waters, and that's managed by the Commonwealth, so fisheries that occur um, out there are uh, managed by the Commonwealth. There are a couple of exceptions where we have um, some uh, basically OCSs, offshore constitutional settlements, where some of the fisheries, particularly recreational fisheries that may be managed by um, the Commonwealth. So bluefin tuna, for example, would be one where the state manages and that's why we have state set bag limits. Um, same with tiger flathead. So that's a Commonwealth assessed fishery, um, but in a recreational sense, it's managed in Tasmania and, and other states. Um, through state management, um, bag limits, et cetera. So the, the fishery that interacts with um, Flathead the most in the Southeast is the um, Commonwealth Southern and Eastern Scalefish and Shark Fishery. So the CESIF it's called. Um, its main target species are on the right there. So this is the you know, trawl fishery and also seine. They have some Danish seine in there as well um, and some uh, shark net as well, I believe. So they're targeting predominantly blue grand deer, tiger flathead, silver warahoo, gummy sharks, pinkling, eastern school whiting. Now, currently at the last assessment, um, these were all not overfished and not subject to overfishing. Now we will circle back around and explain what that means, but I think the green light is kind of the telling point here that currently the fisheries assessments done by the CSIRO, so the Commonwealth Research Agency is suggesting that they're all um, not overfished. So that does include tiger flathead. Um, now the catch limit for tiger flathead is 2,300 tonne uh, for the 22-23 season, so an annual uh, allocation um, that's been allocated to the commercial fishery. Um, but you'll see that we've got some maps coming up, but that's spread out over quite a, a broad range, not just off Tasmania. Now, if we come to sand flathead um, in the, this is in the Commonwealth um, fishery. So keep in mind, we're outside three nautical miles here and keep in mind, sand flathead tend to be more coastal. So the Commonwealth trawl fisheries um, are not interacting uh, to any great extent with sand flathead. So this is um, the annual catch of southern sand flathead in the um, Commonwealth trawl sector. It's not just for Tasmania, it's for all states, which you'll see in a second. Um, and we can see that relatively the catches are very low. Um, so the retained catches are sort of around a tonne, maybe two tonne in 2019. Um, they also, from their observers, uh, get discard rates and they're even lower. So there's not a lot of uh, sand flathead being caught by the Commonwealth trawlers in the CESIF, particularly when you consider that relative to the tiger flathead catch um, of up around 2,300 tonne. So where do these fisheries occur? So these, these hatched margins here are the um, Commonwealth trawl fishery and CESIF, uh, sorry, it's the CESIF um, 
boundary of where that fishery exists. Um, you can see the three nautical miles here around the coast, that thin white band, so they can't fish within that band. Um, and that goes through the mainland. The heat maps there basically are showing where the intensity of effort is from uh, this one on the left is for the otter board trawl. So this is trawling. Um, so this would include, you can see the effort there off northwest Tasmania. Um, that would be where they're targeting blue grenadier. Uh, on the right hand side, we have the uh, fishing intensity from the Commonwealth Danish Seine fishery. Um, so again, a little bit up the east coast, but again, predominantly around um, you know, lakes entrance to Eden. So they a lot of work around that space for tiger flathead, etc. So even where we're seeing that small amount of sand flathead bycatch, where the effort is dispersed, um, sorry, bycatch and, and byproduct, because it's just, it, you know, there is a small take in that um, Commonwealth trawl fishery, but less you know, around a ton, as we saw, a lot of that is actually coming from other areas. It's not coming from Tasmania. So how can we have any confidence in um, you know, what we're seeing um, under the cloak of darkness? Are they you know, catching hundreds of thousands of tonnes that we're not seeing? Um, no, the Commonwealth fishery is very well monitored. They have on, on board observers, um, depending on the risk of non-compliance, it is the, determines the rate of uh, observer coverage that they have. So in the sense of they've done, from so the observer coverage they've they've done, they've seen that bycatch and, and non-species targets are fairly minimal. Um, so I think about 4% of the trips um, have observers on them currently. Some of the other fisheries is up to 100%. Um, but they change and monitor that all the time. Like I'll show you in a sec, there is another thing called e-monitoring, which is increasingly being used across um, the fishery, uh, just so you don't have to have people out on the boats. The other is um, satellite tracking of vessels, so the vessel monitoring system. So this is on all um, Commonwealth uh, fishing vessels. Uh, it was implemented in the CESF in 2007, so it's been on the boats for, for many years. And literally there is a, um, a room in Canberra that has a map of Australia and every fishing vessel tracked on it. Um, and if they deviate inside to a inside a closed area, marine parks, state waters, or anything like that, they risk very big fines. So they are tracked real time, all the time, um, and it is a significant uh, fine for them if they breach rules. Um, the other one I mentioned, and this is sort of technology kicking in on the, in these boats, is e-monitoring. So this is again just to reduce the need for human observers on board. Um, so some of the vessels now carry e-monitoring systems, which are cameras that run 100% of the time. So the way that that would be looked at, because it's a big job to look at 24-hour um, operations on a fishing boat, um, it would be subsampled down to look at sections of it, but it is all there, and if it needs to be checked, it can be. So in the gillnet uh, hook and trap sector, it's as if they, um, they've been using it since 2010. Um, and I would imagine at some stage in the future, they would move into the um, trawl fisheries as well. Okay, so that's the Commonwealth fishery. If we move to Tasmania, so the commercial fisheries for Tasmania, this is the reported sand flathead um, catch in Tasmania from the latest stock assessment report. There's references down the bottom, and I've got several references and links that I might, I'll pass on to you, Jane, that you may be able to distribute if people would like them through email. So if they want to go and check references, they can. Um, but this is showing the reported sand flooded catch. Um, so the black dots are the total, the white dots are the handline fishery. And then the difference between the two is basically the Danish saying there are a couple of other small sources of the fishery, but um, it, it's predominantly Danish saying. So we can see that sort of through 95 to 2007, 8, it was you know hovering around 10 to 15 tonnes. Since that time, it's come down significantly. Um, the Danish saying actually was a smaller proportion of the catch than the hook and line, for, um, sorry, the hand line for a long time. Um, but again, relatively small catches uh, being reported through uh, the state fishery. So this is within three nautical miles. Um, the handline fishery is obviously fairly self-explanatory, so I'm not going into any detail here. That's, you know, potentially the people that go out and hand fish for wrasse and various other scale fish species. It's very small scale uh, localised operations. 
Um, but as you saw before, it actually was catching more SAM flathead than um, the Danish SANE operations. So the Danish SANE operation um, in Tasmania, there are six Danish SANEs. Uh, only two of those are active. There was one that was active on the north coast up until a few years ago, but hasn't been active up there for, for a few years now. Um, all the retained catch is landed whole uh, as part of the Danish SANE operation. They target two species. So they're targeting tiger flathead. So this is where it's important that we think about what we learned before about the difference between the species. Um, to do that, they're using a large mesh cod end. So the mesh size on that on the, you know, the bag, which is basically what you can see here, the cod end of the net, um, is 70 to 90 millimetres when they're targeting um, tiger flathead. They want big fish. They don't want to be spending all their time sorting through um, getting rid of small fish. It's a waste of their time. Um, so they are they are targeting larger fish. They're also targeting slightly slightly deeper, you know, uh, sandy substrate. Um, again, trying to target those larger tiger flathead, which we know sort of live in slightly deeper water, you know, or higher abundances in slightly deeper water. The other species they seasonally target is school whiting. Now this is, they have a specialised cod end, it's a smaller mesh, so it's around 42 mil and it's in shallower sandy substrate. So this is kind of the area that we would expect maybe to see a little bit more overlap. Um, but we have um, gone and had a look at it uh, on several trips. We've done three trips last year and we will continue to do some more this year to look at what their bycatch is and what their catch reported is. Um, so the catch report was 43 kilos of sand flooded in 2022. So again, looking back to that last graph, it, it's it's fairly small. Um, and similarly with bycatch, so if, you know, in discards, on the three trips that we've done, they got reasonably good bags of, of whiting um, and there was 19 sand flathead discarded across those three trips. So th there's not huge amounts of sand flathead being taken by the state Danish sand fishery. The operators also are actively aiming to minimise their um, mortality of discards. You know, we, we sort of sometimes think of them as they're out rape, rape and pillaging. The guys will actually split the bag, so they'll drop a small amount onto the deck, then lower the bag back into the water, sort that catch so that that bag or the fish aren't you know, flapping around on the deck for ages. So they do actually target their operation to try and minimise the damage um, to the discards that they actually get. Okay, so I'll just, I'll fly through these. These are on the um, DePipri, sorry, the NRE website. So um, they can't, red is where they can't fish or Danish saying. Um, there are some exemptions in Storm Bay for, um, and just up into the mouth of uh, the Derwent and the Frederick Henry Norfolk area, Norfolk Bay area, um, for the uh, whiting cot end. Um, but as we saw, that they're really not interacting with a lot of sand flathead at the time. East Coast, um, similar thing, can't, can't come within a mile. The only exception is White Rock there. They can come in within a mile of White Rock or quite close. Um, North Coast, same thing, a mile. Um, and uh, there is an operator that holds a whiting cotton endorsement to go into the blue area. But uh, as I said, they haven't been active for quite some time. 